Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about a couple of uh, things. So the first thing is Jeff Nippert being attacked by Mike Wenwick. Now, as you guys know, I am sponsored by the Hostile Supplements, and Mike Wenwick is not a part of the Hostile, but he's a Fuad Abiyad's personal friend and a co-host at his podcast. So out of respect to Fuad, I waited for an entire day to maybe hear more facts, to actually learn what happened here, to hear the full story, because last night there was just this one video circling around of Mike assaulting Jeff, and I thought, well, it must have been provoked by something. However, based on all I heard so far, it seems like, uh, no, not really. You know, it seems like Mike just lost his temper for no reason. What Jeff did do is he criticized Mike's uh, training and he replied to his reel about science-based lifters and apparently that's it, that's the whole thing and when these guys met in the gym, Mike approached him and, and assaulted him, Th that's about it really. Because after the whole incident, Jeff did post an update, he went for a CT scan and uh, yeah, he's okay, he's fine, he didn't suffer any uh, major injuries, which could have happened, you know, he pushed him really hard, and the guy fell on the floor, and he could have hit his head somewhere, he could have been seriously injured. Now, if this was like a, a fight, I would be okay with that, you know, but I gotta do what's right, I gotta say what's right, and what Mike did is definitely not right. So there is the rumor circling around as well, somebody actually wrote this in the comments, I can't find it right now, but there was a comment saying that basically Jeff provoked Mike, that Mike told him to move, and Jeff followed him around the gym, he got into his personal space, and that's why this happened, but apparently Jeff is denying that, and he says that everything was recorded by the cameras in that gym. And the gym is Pure Muscle and Fitness, which is owned by Dorian Hamilton, and Antoine Wayant actually left this comment here, and he says, I've seen the security footage, and witnessed what Jeff Nipper described. Dorian Hamilton told Mike to finish his client and leave the gym today at around noon. He was out at around 1 p.m. and is not allowed back at a pure muscle fitness as of now. Now, if this was just a regular fight between two grown men, I would be like, whatever, you know, why, why is Jeff making this seem so dramatic, like, why is he so soft, I mean, yeah, he's Canadian, but still, but no, I mean, Jeff is a small, tiny, short, a natural guy, a kid, basically, and Mike is a 300-pounder, who used to be a bodyguard for Drake, so he is combat trained. So I think it's pretty safe to say that what happened here is uh, just simply Mike lost his temper and did something that is very much uh, wrong. And that's the sum of it. What Mike can do right now, he still didn't voice himself, he said nothing so far, but what he can do is uh, simply apologize and admit that he was wrong, that he lost his temper, and, you know, deal with the consequences, with people losing respect for him, with people disliking him, with... Uh, possible charges or a lawsuit, but do I believe in cancel culture? No, no, I don't think he should be canceled. Do I follow these guys, Jeff Nippert or Mike Wenwick? No, I do not. I do follow, I do watch Fuad's podcast religiously, and I have to watch Mike over there, but do I like Mike? Well, with all due respect to Fuad, I don't, because he was very vocal about guys like myself, about channels like my own, and he actually wanted to cancel our thing. He actually said we all need to stand up and to prevent these guys from making all this content, they are not professional bodybuilders, they should not be speaking about us, this and that. He's a very angry person, he has a lot of rage in himself. I don't know what is his problem, but it seems like he has a lot of suppressed rage and, you know, it exploded. And it happened that Jeff Nippert was in his uh, close proximity at that moment and he got the hit. Now, I'm sure something like this can happen to me at some point. It happened to Louis Marco back in the day, if you guys remember, when uh, William uh, Bonek pushed him. But William Bonek is, is basically the same size as Louis Marco, so that was okay. This, this was just, you know, a little bit unfair. Do I follow these guys, Jeff Nippert or Mike Wenwick? No, I do not. I do follow, I do watch uh, Fuad's podcast religiously, and I have to watch Mike over there. But do I like Mike? 
Well, with all due respect to Fuad, I don't, because he was very vocal about uh, guys like myself, and he actually wanted to cancel guys like us. Now, if something like this happened to me, I wouldn't be just lying on the floor there, I would stand up and fight the guy. I mean, I shouldn't be talking about this because it never happened, maybe I would react differently, but I'm pretty sure I wouldn't just lay there. But that's besides the point, Jeff is the way he is, I don't really follow him, but I've seen some shorts and some reels, and he seemed like a very, very, extremely nice and polite guy. I, I, I don't think he did anything to provoke Mike, I'm pretty sure about that. He just criticized his training, and, you know, Mike hates uh, the science-based lifters. He is very, very opinionated on this, and he speaks about this very often, because that's his whole thing, basically. He is all about old-school uh, instinctual type of training, and the other thing of his is just raging and, and hating on everybody who doesn't do what he thinks is the best. So, like, if you watch his videos, I watched a couple of, I tried to watch him, and it's always, like, 20-minute rants of him just dissing on people, on, on different opinions, and so on. That's all he does, he just hates on everybody, he uses everybody else to, to promote himself by hating on them, and then he speaks bad about people who are making uh, reaction videos like myself on a podcast, which is actually doing the same thing. So, not a lot of things Mike says and does make sense, let's be real. And I don't think he thought this through at all. He just lost his temper and did something that was wrong. Now, Fuad Abed made a video as well, in which he's basically saying that he's not gonna disown his friend because whatever he did... And I absolutely respect that. I, co I command that. I applaud that. If it was my best friend, I, I would not disown them. I would definitely not, you know, stop being friends with them because they did something wrong. Plenty of my friends did wrong things, and they're still my friends. People make mistakes, it happens. As long as he realizes what he did was wrong, or if it was justified. I mean, we still didn't hear Mike's side, and we haven't seen the footage. This is all based on what Jeff says and what Antoine says, but I think it's pretty clear that whatever happened was uh, exactly the way they described it. So, all things considered, I wanted to give Mike uh, the benefit of the doubt because of Fuad, but at this point, it's, it's pretty obvious what happened, and I gotta do what's right. I, I gotta condemn this. This was definitely very much wrong. Uh, I hope uh, Mike will realize that and, and apologize, and, you know, deal with the consequences as well. Not by being cancelled, come on guys, I'm sure he can fix this somehow and, and, I don't know, do something nice for Jeff and, you know, apologize and, you know, deal with, 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 with the charges or the lawsuit and, uh, you know, not, not be cancelled. I mean, if you want to watch him, you should watch him. I didn't watch him before, I'm not going to continue to watch him. Uh, him being on a podcast, he's very silent, he doesn't talk a lot. He has some funny jokes and, you know, I appreciate them. I would prefer if it was somebody else, honestly, to, to say a little bit more of interesting things. A bodybuilder, a professional bodybuilder, but that's just me. I'm sure Mike has a lot of fans as well. I don't know how many will he, will he have left after this, to be honest, because from what I'm seeing, basically everybody in the comment section is against him now. And honestly, I, I don't think he's going to be back on the podcast. I mean, Fuad said what he said, but, like, you know, dealing with this much heat, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what's going to happen, but... Yeah, you guys tell me down below, what do you think about this? If anybody benefited from this whole situation, it's gotta be Matt Jensen. <laughs> this took all the heat away from him and towards uh, Mike Van Wick. But today, we got a statement from Sean Clarida as well. As you guys know, everybody left Matt yesterday. Nick Walker, Brett Wilkin, and Sean Clarida as well. And uh, he's the only guy that didn't really say anything so far. But he made it official by making this story, and he says, This will be the only statement I make in regards to Matt Jensen. Throughout our time together, we shared some amazing moments, including a ton of wins, a New York Pro, Texas Pro, two Olympia wins. He devoted his time and energy into helping me succeed, and that's something that I'll always cherish and appreciate. Sean Clarida being a gentleman, as always. But, you know, to be honest, you gotta give props when props are due. I mean, Matt Jensen really didn't fail that much before. I mean, this is the first year he had so many missed peaks. I mean, not just peaks in terms of a peak week, but like uh, dieting and everything. He just had so many miscalculations this year. 
I don't know what really went wrong with Matt Jensen, hopefully he will uh, voice himself and explain, but, you know, I, I have a hard time believing that, like, he was just so lucky so far, that he had all these genetically blessed bodybuilders and everything just went smoothly and he was just lucky that nothing went wrong and he didn't have to problem solve, I don't know, man, I mean, it's a little bit too much, he has been a top coach for a long, long time, and, like, he didn't fail almost at all uh, until this year, when he failed with everybody. Even though there for sure are coaches who probably know better, who are smarter, who can problem solve better when they encounter problems, still, I mean, uh, Matt had a great career as a coach up until this year, so I'm pretty sure he knew what he was doing, at least to a point, and that point is, you know, winning multiple Olympia titles with uh, Sean Clarida, placing top 3 with Nick Walker and the Mr. Olympia in the Open, top 5 as well, winning the Arnold Classic, so we gotta give some props to Matt, but unfortunately Sean did not go and explain what happened during this prep, I mean, what went wrong, why was he so downsized, was it just uh, Matt's miscalculation or something else, was he to be blamed, I don't think so, if, he, if it was the case he would say it, so yeah, it's just uh, Matt's mistake, and Nick also didn't explain anything, maybe he will, but since he's sponsored by Matt, uh, I don't think he's gonna be very honest and say and blame it on him, but uh, yeah, at least we got something from Sean, and yeah, I mean, uh, Matt, uh, I said in my previous video he retired, but really, he ran out of business. And the last thing we got is also very interesting, it's uh, Brion Ainsley saying that he might potentially move to the 212 division. So he says, will I stay in Classic for another year, or take my talents to the 212 division? Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I'm pretty sure he already teased this uh, before, and he never really went through with it. So, is he saying this just to tease us, you know, the way Kai Green is teasing a comeback, and so many other guys as well, I don't know, maybe this time around he's actually being serious, but he did ask a question, will I stay in the Classic or go to the 212, and he might just answer that question on his YouTube channel and say, no, I will stay in Classic, <laughs> so it's really not much, but he did mention it, should he go to 212? I mean, he does look more like a 212 bodybuilder than a classic guy, you know, he doesn't have the most classic lines, but he plays top 5 at the Mr. Olympia, he won the Dubai Pro, he beat Urs Kletinski at the Iron Classic UK, so he is still a top classic physique guy, and at his age of 45 years old, he should not be switching to bodybuilding, he would have to grow probably more muscle, I don't know what his weight is right now, but I think he's like at around 180, so he has uh, 30 pounds of room, you know, 30 pounds of muscle he can put on if he went uh, in a 212, I mean, at that age, to risk his health, to risk uh, basically placing so well in classic physique and, you know, being a top guy in classic physique and moving to the 212 where he would be probably mediocre. Uh, I don't know, but like, also, you know, he has been in the top five uh, classic physique for the past, uh, how many, like 10 years almost, and he is not gonna be winning the Mr. Olympia again, so maybe he should try something new, not put on 30 pounds of muscle, but just, you know, uh, try and stay fuller, maybe gain 5 pounds of muscle, and see how he does, because he does have a really good shape, and with a little bit of extra muscle and more fullness, maybe with his shape he can create an illusion of having a lot more size and actually he can place you know, inside of the top 5 in the 212 Olympia, if that happened, that would be a great success in his career, so maybe he should go for it. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, for more content like this guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, and if you guys need a coach, someone that's gonna help you, you know, get ready for the show, or just lose fat, gain muscle, whatever, you can hire me, I work with a lot of athletes, a lot of uh, bodybuilders, competitive bodybuilders, especially here in Balkans, but I have some international clients as well, it's something I do out of passion, I just love it, you know, I educate myself all the time on these topics, and I love to implement my knowledge, so I'm very available for my guys, and not for uh, competitors only, but for lifestyle athletes as well, and I'm really not charging a lot of money, so guys, you can DM me on Instagram, we can talk about this, anyways, once again, like the video, subscribe to the channel, thank you so much guys for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.